Why I don't think there are gods. Gods are supernatural beings. They stand outside the laws of physics, thermodynamics, chemistry, biology, evolution, meteorology, gravity, centrifugal force, you name it. Well, where did this start? How did I begin to walk away from that which I was raised in, the Christian faith? First, it sufficed for a number of years because forgiveness, compassion, and love resonated with me. But the first thing that I noticed, which was deleterious about this enterprise, was the people. Now, there are those who would say, and they would be right, that you can't judge a philosophy by the people involved in it, can't you? In the case of a religion which is supposed to transform a person and a people, why would you find among those professing to believe in forgiveness, compassion, and love, people who support the death penalty? Why would you find droves of people, if not a majority, who support segregation, slavery, who support wars of intervention, even when they aren't necessary. Why would you, among that group of people, find fewer Nobel scholars and more criminals? So, you see, at a young age, probably before 18, around the time I was noticing that the stories being conveyed to me from the Bible were very strange and seemed to go against everything I was learning in school and on television and in books, especially in my chosen field of interest, aerospace, I also noticed that the people around me did not rise to the moral character which I aspired to. So this was the beginning. These were the initial breaks in the stone in the foundation of my being a religious person. So I went from being a devout follower of Jesus and a Christian to an agnostic. And it took many years before I could actually say that I was an atheist. An atheist is a person who hasn't had any supernatural beings added to his or her worldview. Despite what some people may ignorantly say, it is not a person who doesn't believe in God. In fact, I don't use the word belief because I find it to be a bulwark against reason and honesty. Chief among my reasons for having to have a worldview which makes sense is one that perhaps came from the good parts of Christianity. I learned to be humble at a young age. And this is why today I don't refute science when there seems to be enough evidence in a given area. To me, that's arrogant. For people to curse Charles Darwin or any other scientist takes a great deal of malice, a great loss of kindness, consideration, and respect. Now, I do have a pretty good working knowledge of how physics and other aspects of science work. I'm not a physicist. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a biologist. And to the chagrin of my earlier self, I'm not a space scientist, an aerospace engineer, or an astronomer. But as an adherent of the incipient principles in these fields of study, I know how they work. And the parts of religion which don't jive with them are making huge claims about the universe. Huge claims with which we cannot broaden the scope of vision to medicine and to other areas without lying. That's not humble. To me, a man or a woman, an adult, is someone who can look at the facts and not only for his or her own preservation or that of his or her friends and family, but for a sense of being humble in the face of truth, cannot deny facts. And so this is why I'm an atheist. Those who know me have known that at varying times, if not indeed for the bulk of the time, since around the time I was about uh, 30, 32, maybe 40, I've called myself a Buddhist, 
but I'm a secular Buddhist, which means I utilize and I appreciate the secular principles in Buddhism as the Buddha taught them. The Buddha was ignorant enough to believe there were gods, but he said, don't follow them. That's pretty scary if you ask me. If I believed that there were gods, I'd follow one or another of them. But I can't qualm or make qualms with the Buddha. The Buddha was an enlightened man who decided, who decided to meditate and clear his mind and find a reason. And he found the middle path. And the reason that I don't depart from Buddhism the way I departed from Christianity is religion does have benefits, community, a way for people to meet who normally wouldn't, to come together, to be friendly, to overcome differences. And ritual actually does help the human being. But I can't engage in such things where they're surrounding a delusional paradigm. And so I go to Buddhist temples, but I only meditate. I don't pray. I bow to the Buddha nature, which means the natural nature of human beings, which I should respect, and that of other creatures. But I also call myself an Athenian. I'm aware that the great philosophers of Greece and Rome said many of the things that the Buddha said before he said them. By rights, I shouldn't actually be a secular Buddhist, or a Zenist, I should be an Athenian. I actually have Greek heritage. I honor highly Epictetus, Democritus, Socrates, Herodotus, Plato, Marcus Aurelius of Rome. But you see, I can take from different philosophies without being obsessive about one by charting my own moral path, which is based on being humble and truthful and virtuous. I could go on and on about this all day because there are many multifaceted reasons which interlock, which make it impossible for me to ever be a Christian, a Muslim, or a religious Jew. The reason I talk about this today is in the course of discussing politics and the path of society, it becomes necessary to decide what we think resonates as true with us. And I find that among the religious people, this is where we have the greatest problem in convincing people to follow the facts, to be honest about the law and what has happened in a given situation, to be scientific, to be reasonable, to be rational. Indeed, all of the people who support Trump, if not all of them, most of them, they're religious Christians. Try to jibe that with the ideas that we do attribute to Christ as true. And by the way, the Bible, if you listen to scholars, is filled with errors, discrepancies, forgeries, and lies. Things that never happened. And people base their lives on that. That's not good in the least. And it's not honest in the worst. So, to me, an honorable person faces facts, does what needs to be done. It's why I'm bald. I can have a full head of hair. And even while it's gray, people tell me it looks good, but I could dye it and make it look even better. So why did I choose this? Because I listen and I'm humble. And I know that the facts that come out of multitudinous studies indicate truth. And in the case of the coronavirus, I shouldn't be going to a barber to cut my hair. In the case of the coronavirus, I don't want to catch an airborne molecule with the virus on it in my hair. This is the easiest way for me to be certain, within a margin of error, that I'll be safe. So you see, I do what needs to be done. I accept what needs to be accepted. I don't let sentimentality, though I am a very sentimental person, get in the way of reason because it's foolish and ultimately you're lying to people when you have to represent, represent yourself about it. It's dishonest and that's not humble. So I recommend that you examine your worldviews. Are they humble? Are they honest? Are they truthful? Are they factual? Are they kind? And don't put kind at the top because that's probably what's driving many religious people. They want to be kind, so they accept lies. 
They accept a felonious president who is a danger to democracy and egalitarian republic. And then they end up having to justify their whole worldview. And this is a cause of mental illness. If you continually have to backtrack and rewrite what you think, what you heard, what is fact, so it matches what you want, you're being a child and a dangerous child at that. Peace, love, joy, and secular enlightenment to you.